is really fun tutorialize the motion because today I'm going to show you all you need to know about motion tracking. Okay, so today is a very important lesson in visual effects basics and I will guide you through the four most common tracking scenarios and show you tips and tricks along the way. And in today's tutorial I will use assets that you can download from Envato Elements so you can easily follow along. But more to that later. Hey, and if you stick with me until the end, I will show you two additional motion tracking tips that will help you in your VFX career. Promised. So what are the four different methods? Let's start from simple to advanced. A point tracker is again exactly what it says. It tracks a point and you can attach everything you want to this tracker. This is perfect for motion graphics in real life footage. And today we will turn this soccer field into a motion graphics one. So a planar tracker takes this to the next level as you can track a planar surface and can now attach stuff to this. And this will also track scale, rotation and perspective also, this may be the most used type of tracking for this shot that we will create today. A more advanced version of that is the mesh tracker, which allows you to track a warping surface, such as fabric or even moving skin and facial expressions, like in today's example where we will remove Post Malone's tattoos from his face. And last but not least, there is 3D motion tracking that allows us to track the camera movement of a scene and therefore add stuff to it in 3D space. Are you as excited as I am? Then let's quickly hit the subscribe button so I can do more of those visual effects lessons for you. And if you also hit the bell, you will also be notified whenever there is a new lesson hitting the internet. So let's start with a point tracker and our soccer scene. In this example, let's concentrate on the referee. So we want to attach this cool motion graphic tracker element to the footage. And this is exactly what a point tracker does. And to get one out there, we need to open up the tracker window and in here, with our layer selected, click on track motion. Or you can simply right click on the layer you want to track, go to track and stabilize and again click on track motion. In here, position is already checked. Perfect. And in 99% of the cases, it makes sense to define a target. That means a layer where we later want to store our tracking data to. And also in 99% of the cases, it makes sense to store it in a null object. Because a null object is specially made for that. It is a non-visible layer that only stores data. Okay, so let's create a null object, call it tracking data and select it in the motion target dropdown menu. Okay, so far so good. Now we have a tracker and the tracker has a cross and two boxes that we can manipulate. So the cross represents the position that we store in the null object. Now, with the small box, we define what we want to track and I place it around the head of our referee. So what is the big box for? Hmm. So the bigger box defines the search area where After Effects is searching for the smaller box within the next frame. Now that everything is set up, let's click on track forward. And you can also stop at each time when you feel like the track is off or something went wrong and adjust or even manually set a few keyframes to help out. But with that shot here, we shouldn't have any issues. So once done, we hit apply and also hit OK in the next window as we want to have X and Y movement. And now when we scrub through this, you see that the null object sticks to the head. Great. So let's bring in the motion graphic we downloaded from Envato and parent the motion graphics to our null object with this pick whip. And in this way, it does exactly the same as our null object. And as the grass on the field is always green, a key light effect will place our referee on top of the motion graphics. Whew, first one done. And you are now a master of point tracking. And feel free to also bring this to the next level by tracking many, many different objects within the shot. Next is our planar tracker. With this one, you can track, as it says, a planar surface and add something to it. And in most of the cases, this is used for cleanup, sign removals or replacements, but it is probably most used for screen inserts. So without going too fancy, let's talk about how this is done. The industry standard planar tracker is called Mocha. And there's a free version of this built into After Effects. So we have the footage here and also something for the sign to add to. And two, two things are important here. And by important, I mean really, 
really important. So first is the footage and the asset you want to place in there later on need to have the same dimensions. So if you have scaled something up or repositioned it, simply pre-compose it before tracking. And second, if anything is off later on or the track seems to be wrong, go back to number one. Now let's fire up Mocha. Also in here we define the area we want to track. This time we can create a whole search area with the spline tool and also call this our tracking 01. And as before, simply track forward. Once done, we need to do one last thing. Let's have a look at the surface we have tracked by clicking on that blue surface icon. Okay, now it is set to the sign and this square represents our corner pins later on. But you remember that we have made our sign comp as big as our main comp size? First is the footage and the asset you want to place in there later on need to have the same dimensions. So we can click on that expand planar surface tool and now the edges of the blue surface are also aligned with the edges of our comp. Perfect. Now simply save and close it. And back in After Effects we can now load the tracking data we have created. Let's also choose the layer we want to apply it to and remember that we want to use corner pins to do the trick. So we choose corner pin data. Oh, and we can have corner pins and motion blur. Well, for sure. And we hit apply. Nothing easier than that. Planar, track, check. Now, next up is a mesh tracker. Again, it does exactly what you expect, it tracks a mesh. And we can use that to not only track a planar surface, but for example, fabric or skin. And this is time saver number one when it comes to retouches, beauty shots or digital makeup. We have a big task ahead, removing Post Malone's face tattoos. So once again, we need help from Mocha. This time we need the pro version of Mocha. And if you consider purchasing it, feel free to use my code FLOWMOTION15 to get 15% off at the checkout. And there's also a link to that in the video description. So, as before, we set it up in the same way as we did for the planar track. We have our footage on one layer and on top we have the stuff that we want to track in. In this case, I went into Photoshop and removed all of his tattoos and saved the frame back as an image file. And I simply masked out the parts where he has tattoos. And again, very important, both layers have the same resolution. This time we apply Mocha Pro to the shot and create the spline around the area we want to track. And in the Pro version, we now have the option to enable mesh tracking, which automatically creates a mesh for us. Perfecto! And again, simply track it forward. Once done, as before, we simply go to our reference frame. For me, this is the frame where I created the clean plate. And I can once again align the blue surface to the whole image. The same workflow as we have done for the planar tracking. So back in After Effects, all the warping data is stored in the effect. So this time, let us simply copy and paste the effect onto the retouch skin layer. And, ooh, nothing is happening. Hmm. This is good, because by default warping is turned off. This is because if it would be turned on, the original footage layer would also be warped and that would indeed look a little bit strange. So we have to tell the effect that it should be active, so render, and also what it should render. And of course we want to see the warped image, so we select that. And voila, we are now also certified mesh warp tracking experts. Up is the last and one of the most important tracking tasks. 3D camera tracking. Again, we have this nice footage file here from Envato. Hey, and they do not only have all the footage file we have used today, as well as the motion graphics, but also millions of photos, templates, After Effects projects, sounds and music, as well as 3D assets, where you can download the angle you need for your comp already with an alpha channel. And if you want to try it out or simply want to follow along with this tutorial, I have a link in the video description that gives you 70% discount at the checkout. So definitely try it out. And all licenses and everything you download are yours for a lifetime, even if you end your subscription. So for the 3D track, we want to recreate the camera movement of the camera that was filming this shot. So we can later on add stuff to it and it will integrate perfect as the camera move is the same. So, as before, we can now go to the tracker or right click and choose track camera and it will automatically start analyzing. But wait, 
wait, we can directly improve that. Simply go to advanced and choose detailed analysis. It doesn't take that much longer, but simply gives you a better result. So I would just always use this option. And by the way, you can work while After Effects is analyzing. So once done, you get a representation of all tracking markers After Effects has found to track this. And think about that as many, many different point trackers. So if you cannot see them, simply click on the effect and there they are. And out of their movement and their position to each other, After Effects can now calculate a 3D camera. And this is what we do next. But I will also create a solid together with the camera so I have a visual reference. And I typically want to create a solid at the position that gives me the best reference. So in this shot, I may create a solid that represents the floor. And there's an easy way to do it. And unfortunately, the easy way is not the best. Because if you hover in between the tracking points, you will get a triangulated planar surface and you could could create a surface out of those. And this is what most of you are doing, right? But let's also improve on that, okay? Because think about this as a table. We have selected three legs, or in our case, three track points, and want to add a plate or solid on top, so it will be more stable if the three legs are further away. So simply choose your own tracking markers that are furthest away but still sit on the same planar surface. And you can do that by simply holding down control. And this is way better than letting After Effects decide. Okay, and when we think about it, the more legs the table has, the better. So let's create the floor and camera. Perfect. Now simply drag some nice assets into your shot and make them 3D. And if you want to have them in specific places, simply create a null out of a tracking marker and you can now copy the position to your asset. <sighs> that was quite a lot, but you made it through the four most common tracking parts. But we are not done yet. I promised you to show you two more tracking workflows as a bonus. So the first one is how to use your tracking data to stabilize a shot. For example, I have this shaky footage here, also from Envato. And now I simply planar track it in Mocha, set the surface to fill the whole frame, same as we learned before. And this time I apply it to the same layer with transform keyframes. But this time I simply invert the whole thing. And now when the camera went down, the footage goes up and when it rotates clockwise, it now goes counterclockwise. So everything is super stable. Exactly what we want. Shot saved. And up to the final tracking tip, track a mask. Let's take the same shot maybe. And mm, we want to change the color of the boat so it matches better to her dress. And I can create a mask around the boat and click away. By now we all know the tracking window and it looks like before, but now we can do magic. Let's simply click on the mask path but have your eyes on the tracking window in three, two, one. <laughs> Saw that? We have unlocked a secret feature in After Effects. And now we have a mask tracker. Yes, right. We can click on track forward and it tracks the mask path for us. And who of you wish to have that known way before? <laughs> Let me know in the comments down below because this is the end of today's lesson. And if you learned something today, also let me know in the comments. Did I miss something about tracking? You still have questions? Hey, I answer all of them, promised. All you have to do is hit the subscribe button and I'm all yours. And for now, I wish you a lot of fun with motion tracking in After Effects.